So today, I'm going to deliver my fighting sermon. This is prompted by uh, a Facebook heading that I saw that said, We fight with nonviolence and humor. And I thought, yeah, I support that 100%. But at the same time, it doesn't go far enough because I realized that there is a place in the new civilization for the fighting spirit. Which you could describe as the will to fight to win, to fight to kill, to fight to destroy, and to fight to fuck, and to fight to dominate. And you could say those are like five of the principal urges or uh, in the will to fight, or this the fighting spirit. And how are those energies going to transfer to the new civilization? And they will. And we actually need people with fighting spirit um, to step up right now and self-organize as a cooperative, nonviolent youth army. And in a humorous and artful way, I'd like to offer myself for now as the nonviolent president of the Global Nonviolent Youth Army and the Commander-in-Chief. And even though there is really no such thing, of course, um, this is sort of my own gesture of of art and performance art to say I'm the nonviolent president of the Global Nonviolent Youth Army and I'm calling now for all the youth of the world to step forward and read the book Not To His Peace and arm yourself with the wisdom that you will need to serve rightly in a cooperatively self-organized nonviolent youth army that will serve on behalf of the Global Cooperative Forum, the Free Union of Renunciate Messengers, and the welfare of everybody all at once on planet Earth. And your initial tasks, of course, are to broker a peaceful two-state solution between Israel and Palestine and come up with a firm and clear definition of Israel's borders that is agreeable to all of Israel's neighbors and stand down all the tensions in the Middle East between Iran and Israel and others. and broker a peaceful solution for Syria and Libya and all the failed states and including Kashmir situation and also to um, well we'll get down to the more of the marching orders for the nonviolent youth army suffice it to say that the fighting spirit lives on and how do we explain this if we're being nonviolent? Who are we fighting? What are we fighting? What are we destroying? What are we killing? Because that urge, as so wonderfully exemplified by Ragnar Lothbrok in the Vikings TV series, and by Ronda Rousey in Ultimate Fighting, and by Fyodor Emelianenkov in ultimate fighting, and in a different way by Stephen Curry in the Oakland Warriors. They dominate. You see, they still completely dominate within their framework, their sport. And that kind of dominance is is necessary to implement a strategic force uh, in the world to match the energy of crisis and threat that exists in the Middle East primarily. But of course, the Nonviolent Youth Army is going to have plenty of work to do with disaster relief and building sustainable bionomies in the world's most threatened areas to create stability and peace in place and spreading the culture of not to his peace and founding the Global Cooperative Forum. All of these things fall on the shoulders of the Nonviolent Youth Army. And they are the activist organ uh, on behalf of the Global Cooperative Forum, both to found it and then to implement strategic force 
operations anywhere in the world uh, based on real priorities of strategic need, harm reduction, harm benefit analysis. And how do those forces of the fighting spirit transfer into the new civilization? This has to be mapped out clearly. There's the will to fight and we fight to win. We still fight to win. We still fight to kill, we fight to destroy, we fight to dominate, and we fight to fuck. So all those things are still operative and the fighting spirit has to find a place in the new civilization. Otherwise you get a bunch of warriors who are untrained, uncontained, and want to fight and will fight, causing havoc and mayhem in service to whatever capitalist thuggeries are still unregulated on the planet. So, the nonviolent youth army must self-generate right now. And the only way to and through that is to really assimilate the wisdom and knowledge of Adidas Samraj and to let him be the real commander-in-chief of the nonviolent youth army. I'm here to muster it on his behalf, and I'm here to lead it in the world as his sword. But he leads me, and I lead you. So that's, that's the real hierarchy and chain of command. And how the f fighting spirit transfers into the new civilization, I'd like to propose as follows. We're fighting to win, first of all. What are we going to win? The creation of a new civilization based on the founding of a global cooperative forum and the free union of renunciate messengers and other entities and organs and, and institutions but those two primarily and that is winning to get those things founded in the world in spite of the resistance in the ego culture in spite of the resistance in Adidam in spite of the resistance in the worldly world. These things are being founded. They will be founded in my lifetime, so help me God. And to me, that would personally account for what I consider winning. But there's going to be a lot of need to have the winning spirit and win many battles to come that are battles of, for example, my band Swaybone getting famous in the world. Um, me asserting leadership as an art provocateur claiming to be nonviolent president of the nonviolent youth army, global youth army, <laughs> serving on behalf of the Global Cooperative Forum. And that's a really radical proposition that's both an, a performance art happening for the rest of my life and an artful stunt, if you like but also potentially very real. Who's to say there won't be a global nonviolent president who's commander-in-chief of the nonviolent youth army? Even though the nonviolent youth army is made up of intimate teams that are autonomous in conscience and sovereignty, and even every individual in the army is sovereign in their choice of right and wrong. So there is no hard and fast um, chain of command. It is all cooperative and our greatest movements as an army are uh, by consensus. And the whole army can move to parts of the world that need us the most. Based on a consensus decision and people can opt out. So it is truly a cooperatively driven nonviolent global youth army. And for now, I'm its commander in chief and the nonviolent president of this um, protective global force that is working on behalf of the global cooperative forum and the interests of everybody all at once from here and in all future time. So that is winning to be sure. Winning means establishing a new civilization and destroying, destroying 
the old civilization's paradigm, its principles, and its methods to a large degree. So, what's really being destroyed is not a human or a body, no one's being killed or assassinated or destroyed physically. What's being killed, what's being destroyed, is the ego at the heart of the old civilization is the ego being enacted in all yet unawakened beings on the planet. Every, in a sense, the killing spirit of Ragnar on the, on the killing fields of the early Middle Ages in England and Francia are the energy of his willingness to kill as much as is needed to win new lands and stable settlements for the Viking people and to spread in many regards their culture of expansion, inquiry, technology, democracy, egalitarianism, parliamentary procedure, judicial procedures, storytelling, poetry, and culture. All these Viking values got transplanted. This is another theme, but the way they did succeed is that they had someone like Ragnar Lothbrok who was willing to fight and kill as much as is needed to win the function and cause and purposes of his people. He didn't hesitate to do that, and he did it successfully, and he was considered the greatest leader of his age. So, we need people who have that same spirit, willingness to, nonviolently of course, kill the ego basis of the old civilization and to kill all remaining individual egos on the planet. In a sense, be like Kali the destroyer or Ragnar Lothbrok the greatest warrior king and be willing and able to punch through the ego, punch through the ego culture and stop it in its tracks with intention and will and in, um, energy, matching energy. And so, how do we kill in the new civilization? We spread Adida's wisdom. We let his person do the magic. He's going to kill and destroy these egos. He's already doing it. So he took, oh, he granted me the ability to no longer self-contract, to no, because I was doing the activity. It wasn't a thing, and it wasn't something thrust upon me by an unjust universe. I was doing the worst injustice that can be done. I was maintaining the ego self-contraction moment to moment throughout many lifetimes. The Guru Adida relieved me of that and has done so successfully day by day now for over two and a half years. So I can vouch for the awakening from the ego that I am saying is now the new basis for civilization. Awakening from the ego is the new civilization. Egolessness is the the basis for the new civilization. The person and presence of Adida Samraj is the basis of the new civilization. And new institutions, such as the Global Cooperative Forum, the Free Union of Renunciate Messengers, and the Zero Point Academy, and all the new sacred guilds, both within Adidam and outside Adidam, are the new institutional fabric, along with intimate cooperative community practice at the level of sustainable bionomies, and eco-villages, and um, means of living both in alignment with living systems but also in alignment with the new cultural paradigm of prior unity and non-separateness. So the Youth Army, I call you now to help prevent the worst from happening in the Middle East, to help us denuclearize the Middle East and America and Russia and the world. No nuclear energy, no nuclear weapons. That is your task. My dear ones, in the Nonviolent Youth Army is to ensure the peaceful and benign denuclearization of this planet, the standing down of violent armies, and the transfer of them into the nonviolent army, or into sex work, or into theater and performance art, but vital action-oriented pursuits 
that helped to telegraph the new artistic, cultural, and um, prior unity-based values of the new civilization. We need to put all of the old style warriors to work in benign departments of the new civilization and make this a systematic and determined effort. Otherwise, we risk civil war and violence of decommissioned warriors having no place to go and other than to be mercenaries for uh, any of the existing thuggeries that are still operative. So, it's very important that we accommodate the fighting spirit in the new civilization. And as your nonviolent president, I welcome all the warriors of the world, all the fighters, all the best fighters, all the killers, to read not to his peace and invite the person and presence of Adi Da into your heart and allow for the awakening to occur in your case from the ego self contraction so that you can participate fully egolessly in the nonviolent youth army, in the sexual artistic self expressive revolution that's happening in the arts and pornography and prostitution being legalized worldwide and becoming a great expressive outlet for decommissioned warriors. So this is a systematic thing. We're using sex and we're using a nonviolent army to channel, redirect all of the fighting spirit from the old civilization into the new civilization. We have to systematically, methodically, consciously accommodate and intelligently transfer the fighting spirit from the old civilization and the violent ego-based armies and killing systems into non-violent but nevertheless kill positive, win positive, destroy positive, fuck positive, domination positive disposition. But what we're dominating is the old ego culture and replacing it completely. What we're winning is a new civilization and destroying the basis, ego basis of the old civilization. Destroying its legitimacy. Destroying it. Killing the ego culture and the individual egos that remain. Not killing bodies not gross killing and violence, right? Killing the ego principle, the self-contraction, and the idea of separateness, whether it's individual or collective, that's what we're destroying. So the wind spirit, the destroy spirit, the kill spirit, the fuck spirit, the dominate spirit are alive and well and even purified and released of their unnecessary association with division, violence, and gross destruction and affiliated with the rebirth and renaissance of a sex positive expressive artistic culture that's global unified non-divisive truly welcoming of the heart in all this is winning my dear ones in the nonviolent youth army and I'm sure we're gonna find many many wonderful ways to win beyond what I can imagine. But I want to give you something to go on now because you are needed now. And you are the self-organizer. Anyone listening to this is the governor, the governance of this nonviolent army. You are all equal. Everybody all at once is the nonviolent youth army. Everybody all at once is called to practice nonviolent but fighting spirit positive appropriate tactics to win. To win. In the terms I've described and other benign and positive terms as yet to be imagined. So let us do it. And it's going to start at a special sacred place called the Man of Radical Understanding near Middletown, California. And this is on the sacred site of Adidas Sanctuary there, where there are the facilities being developed for a truly sustainable bionomy-based global village. 
and a true sacred theater guild based on Adidas Orpheum trilogy and a true sacred camel and sacred zoo guild these are where we're going to create the heartbeat of the new civilization and spread it outward and nonviolent youth army I'm calling you.